got an exam question walkthrough on enthalpy changes. So in the question, we'll be looking at calorimetry, standard enthalpy change of formation, and Hess's law. And hopefully you like the video, so if you wouldn't mind hitting the like button, and if you're not already subscribed, please do so and switch on the notifications. Okay, so the question's on three slides, so all I'm going to do is click through the three slides. You can pause the video, have a go at the question, and then I'll go through the answers. Okay, so part A is a calorimetry question. So the first thing we've got to do is use the Q equals MC delta T equation to get the energy released by the reaction mixture. So Q equals MC delta T. So M is 50, because we're told we've got 50 grams of hydrochloric acid, multiplied by 4.18, the specific heat capacity of the mixture, multiplied by the temperature increase of five and a half degrees. So that comes out at 1,149.5 joules. Remember, Q is in joules. And I would always advise put that straight into kilojoules. Next thing we'll do is calculate moles. We're told that the HCl is in excess, so we're going to base our moles on the limiting reagent, which is the sodium carbonate. So mass over MR gets us moles of 0 0.03. And then delta H is Q in kilojoules divided by the moles. So we get those numbers there. And we get a delta H to three significant figures of minus, don't forget the sign, 38.3 kilojoules per mole. Now, the wording in the question isn't fantastic, so it hasn't said to ignore the increase in mass when the 3.18 grams goes into the 50 grams of acid. So technically, M is actually 53.18 grams. If you've used that in your Q calculation, that's fine, and you should have got an answer of minus 40.8 kilojoules per mole. So if you've got that, that would be full marks as well. So part B now, we've got to give the standard enthalpy change of formation definition and quote the standard conditions. So the key things there, enthalpy change when one mole of a compound formed from its elements and the standard conditions they wanted was 298 Kelvin or 25 degrees C, 100 kilopascals or 100,000 pascals. Write an equation including state symbols for the reaction that represents a standard the change of formation of NH4ClO4 solid. So we need to produce one mole of that from elements. So that's going to be half a mole of N2 gas, two moles of H2 gas, half a mole of Cl2 gas and two moles of O2 gas. So the last part of the question now, the calculation, where we've got to calculate the enthalpy change of formation of NO. So the key thing here is the information that we've been given is standard enthalpy changes of formation. So that means we're going to use, well, I would use a cycle. So I'm going to show you the cycle method and the sort of formula method as well. So the cycle would start off with the equation that we want across the top. Remember the delta rate is being given. Ordinarily you'd normally calculate that, but this time we're going to be calculating value for the formation of NO. At the bottom we draw a box and put all the elements in. So it's a good idea to put the correct moles of elements in and the state symbols. So three moles of aluminium, obviously we've got three moles there, one, two, three there, one and a half moles of N2, three in front of that N there, or three there, look. So it's all balancing six H2s, so that's three times those four is 12, six times those two is 12, and so on. So elements at the bottom there, and then to create the cycle, we're going to go up to the reactants from the elements. So that would be the sum of the enthalpy changes of formation of the reactants. Remember, that's an element, so it doesn't have an enthalpy change of formation. And 
micro over this side, we've got the sum of the enthalpy changes of formation of the products. There's a couple of ways to process this, or you could just use the formula, which I'll show you in a second. So one way you could think about it is the Hess's law root could be this way plus this way. We'll call that the red root equals this way here. So we'll give that the green color. So if you manipulate that, we're saying that the sum of the enthalpy changes of formation of the reactants plus this known delta H equals the sum of the enthalpy changes of formation of the products. So therefore, the enthalpy change, this enthalpy change here, is these minus this one. And there's that formula. Or another way you could think about it is like a vector approach. So you could have this root here, and you could have this root here. And then if you just follow the direction of the arrows, so this equals this, but the problem with this arrow here is it's going in the wrong direction. So all we do is flip the sign. So this equals the negative of that plus that one. Obviously it's easy to write it the way we did before. The sum of the enthalpy changes of formation of the products, this one, minus the sum of the enthalpy changes of formation of the reactants. So either way, you're going to be using this formula anyway. Sometimes they do like to see a cycle or they ask for a cycle. That's why I've put it into the walkthrough. So putting the numbers in now, we get this delta H across the top, minus 2677, equals the sum of all of these. Remember, there's three unknowns in there. So I've got that there. And obviously, I'm getting all the other values from the table, minus the sum of these, or so three of those. So that's up there. Tidying the numbers up, we get that. So those three unknowns is 270. So the unknown is obviously 90. And we would write that in the answer as plus, don't forget the sign, plus 90. So obviously, if an enthalpy change comes out not being negative, you must give it a positive sign.